21 minutes past seven. Thanks, Dom. Bianca Jagger, uh, the environmental campaigner, has written to The Telegraph this morning. In fact, she's written an article in The Telegraph saying that efforts by Extinction Rebellion to target that newspaper and others had been a mistake. Uh, restricting freedom of speech is certainly never the way to go about convincing other people of one's arguments, she says. And uh, that article comes as Extinction Rebellion themselves say it's ridiculous to target them with organised crime legislation, as the government is said to be thinking of doing. We can talk to Tim Crossland, who's an Extinction Rebellion member and a legal advisor to the group, used to be a government lawyer. Morning to you. Good morning, Justin. Let's start with Bianca Jagger. What do you say to her? Well, let's talk about free press and freedom of the press, because only a few days ago, the Council of Europe issued the UK government with a media freedom alert over its blacklisting of investigative journalists. And the hallmark of organised crime is, is corruption. And it's really interesting for us to see what happens when you cross the man who dominates politics in the UK, in the US and in Australia, who corrupts our democracies, who sits on the board of Genie Oil and Gas along with Dick Cheney, who fought those fossil fueled wars. We've seen what happened to the second part of the Levinson inquiry that was going to investigate allegations of improper relationships between News Corp and the Metropolitan Police. Matt Hancock decided to ax it presumably because he thought it didn't matter whether those allegations were true. What's Mr and Murdoch got to do with the Telegraph and the Mail? We were blocking the Murdoch press and the, the, print, the printing press that uh, prints the Murdoch papers. And so that right, was... The so they were collateral damage, the Telegraph and the Mail? The delay to their papers, to the print versions of those papers, that wasn't the principal target. Uh, if you could... Would you then shut down all Murdoch-owned papers in this country? Is that your, your um, uh, aim? It's not our aim at all. No, the aim of an action like this, which is a delay to uh, the print version of the papers for a few hours, is to highlight the misinformation that's coming from the Murdoch press stable, that's preventing the urgent action that's necessary to deal with the climate and environmental emergency. But so you have no beef with those papers now and the journalists who work on them carrying on to do their work. This was a one-off. It was a, a, a stunt, if I put it like that. It wasn't an intention to close them down, uh, as has been suggested by some in a sinister way. There's complete, of course, there's no intention to close the newspapers down. That's not the way direct action works at all. There is nothing more important to Extinction Rebellion than access to accurate information. That's the central tenet of Extinction Rebellion. Yeah, but it's when you say accurate information, I mean, it's just ac access to what people say about things, isn't it, as well? That's what worries people. And you obviously have the right to say what you believe about things. But do you accept that other people who disagree with you, including actually Mr Murdoch, but more more importantly, a lot of other people in this country also have the right to have those things read, discussed, talked about. The climate and environmental emergency is not a matter of opinion. It's a matter of ah, scientific ah. fact. Well, no, here we are, you see, because it is a matter of opinion, isn't it? So, for instance, Extinction Rebellion want us to be carbon neutral by 2025. Plenty of environmental campaigners think that's absolutely mad. It would destroy our economy. That is a matter of opinion, isn't it? The climate environmental emergency has been recognised by Parliament in May 2019. Yes, but they don't want to do the things that you are suggesting we should be done. All I'm suggesting is that there is room, is there not, for um, a, a, a disagreement, a legitimate disagreement between people about what is going on. There, there is no room for disagreement that urgent and radical action is being taken and the government is failing to do that and the Murdoch press is making that failure possible and facilitating it. There's no room for disagreement about that. When you say there's no room for disagreement, that will strike people as essentially totalitarian. You are not allowing people to take a different view or you would not allow them if you were in control. Well, let me, let me, this is not about control. We've got no interest in control. What we're interested in is, is proper democracy, with, where people make evidence-based decisions on the basis of good evidence. So let me please give you two concrete examples of this. I've spoken to Sir David King, the former chief scientist to the, to the government, and he wanted to go public with a report that he had prepared on the implications of the climate emergency for all of us. And he was blocked from doing that by a special advisor at number 10 out of fear of upsetting the Murdoch press. That's what's happening to our democracy. Let me give you one more example, please. Briefly. Um, um, the wildfires in Australia. 
as scientists have made quite clear, the Murdoch press's attempts to, to attribute those to um, arsonists, to environmental policies, was yeah. just plain false. So disgusted was James Murdoch by the misinformation around that, that he's left News Corporation. Well, there we so, are. It's a discussion between people about what's going on. That's my point, that you don't seem to want to have the discussion. You want to shut people down. What we've done is precisely what's getting me onto the station this morning, which is facilitating <laughs> a discussion about the power of the Murdoch press All over right. our democracy. Well, that's, that's a fair point, I suppose, but we are out of time. Chris, Tim Crossland from Extinction Rebellion. Thank you.